Hi friends, I am Esa Hangari and I plan to teach you RESTful API in Laravel in this course. Application Programming Interface or API is an interface that provides a way for us to communicate with an object. Whether this object is physical like a TV remote control or a software such as clicking a button to play a song. An application programming interface is a set of definitions and protocols for apps or services to communicate with each other. It acts as a bridge between them. It also has the details of how something works. We don't need to know the underlying code and logic. We just need to know what we have to do, what method we need to call to implement the desired functionality. We use APIs to extend the functionality of our application so that we don't have to code everything ourselves. One of the features of APIs is that they are standardized. They follow a common set of guidelines to make sure that they are consistent in their design and implementation. There are different sets of standards such as SOAP or GraphQL. But in this course, we will look into REST. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It is a software architectural style used to create web APIs. RESTful API is a service that conforms to the REST architecture and six guiding constraints. These constraints are client-server architecture, statelessness, cacheability, layered system, code on demand, and uniform interface. I'm not going to go into any further detail about what a RESTful API is in this course. The most common used case for web APIs is Data Retriever. An application makes the request to the web server of the API provider. For example, Twitter. The web server accesses the Twitter database and returns the requested data back in a response. This might sound very similar to the request response cycle between a standard web page and a server. The major difference is that a web page request returns HTML, CSS, and JavaScript while an API request returns most commonly JSON objects. JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, is meant to be passed by a computer program rather than a person. Now that you have a basic understanding of what a RESTful API is, APIs can be used for various reasons. To access data so that multiple services can work together, you can look up information about recipes, music, public holidays, fitness, and so on. You can also use an API to hide complexity and extend the functionality of your service. All in all, APIs are everywhere. In this course, we will learn how to build a service-side API in Laravel. To get started building our RESTful API, let's create everything we will need during this course. We will need a model, a migration, a controller, an API resource, a factory, and a seeder. We can use PHP Artisans to create our model by running PHP Artisan. Make model petition in the terminal. The convention is to use the singular case. So petition, not petitions. Before we ran the command, we could also create other classes we will need. By adding the M or migration flag, PHP Artisan will also create the migration. By adding the F or factory flag, it will create a factory. The S or Seed flag will create a seeder, and the C or controller flag will create a controller. Or we could just run a or all flag to create everything all at once. We will need all of these classes, but I don't want to create a controller this way. I'll show you why in a minute. For now, let's run the command PHP Artisan make model petition MFS. As you can see, we now have a migration, a factory, and a seeder ready. We will come back to these files in the future videos. For now, let's go back to the controller. I could have created a controller while I was creating the model, but I didn't want to do that because doing it that way would create a standard resource controller. And I want to show you how we can create an API controller instead. API routes don't use the create and edit methods. We can create a controller that will automatically exclude these two methods by adding the flag API to the artisan commands. And because we will be using Laravel model route binding, let's also add the model equal petition flag to specify the resource model. Let's run this command now. Yes, we could have just created a resource controller and delete the create and edit methods. But I think it's good to know about this API flag. And specifying the resource model will save us some typing later on. Finally, let's create an API resource class. 
API resources are templates where you define how you want the JSON data to be returned back to the user when they send an API request. Let's run PHP Artisan Make Resource Petition Resource. This will create API resource for a single petition. When we want to return more than one resource, more than one petition, we need to create a resource collection. We create a resource collection by running PHP Artisan Make Resource Petition Collection. Laravel will recognize that we are asking for a collection to be created, not just a single API resource. As you can see in the first case, a single resource was created successfully, and when we specified resource collection with the collection and the name, Laravel created resource collection. Fantastic, our model, migration, controller, API resource, factory, and Cedar have all been created. Earlier, we created a brand new database and a migration file that will allow us to define how our petitions table will look like. Migrations are not just a convenient way to create a database structure, they also serve as a version control. They are a great way to keep track of any changes to the database structure over time and across a team of developers. Every time we or anyone on our team creates a new table or makes changes to an existing table, the record of this action will be saved in our database migrations directory, right here. As you can see right now, the table is empty. Even if I refresh it, nothing's here. So let's define the actual columns we will need in the table. To do this, we need to check the create petitions table file. This class consists of two methods, the up methods and the down method. The up method is where we add what columns we want our table to have and what types of data this columns will contain, right here. And the down method is used when we are dropping the table. We will not be doing anything in this method. So in the up method, we need to add the following fields. We will need the title, the category, the description, the author, and signees. The way we add them is by calling the appropriate fields type method on the table. So for the title, we will call it the string function. For the category, we will call the string function. For the description, we will also call the text function. For the author, we'll call the string function, and for the signees, we will call the integer function. The difference between the text and the string functions is that the string has a limit of 255 characters, whereas the text field can have many more. We could make every field except for the title field nullable, which means that these fields may be null and not required in the database. And we would do that by calling the nullable function on each field like this, but for e underscore petitions application, we will have them all required. So let's get rid of these nullable calls. You can check out old available column types and Laravel documentation. There are many more than just string, text, and integer. Let's see what our database looks like before we run the migration. As you can see, it's empty. There are no tables there. Now let's run the migration by calling php artisan migrate in the terminal. Here, as you can see, Laravel is telling us that migration table was created successfully, which is this one, the petitions table, and all the other tables they already came with Laravel by default, such as the create users table, create caches table, and create jobs table have all been migrated successfully as well. Now let's check the database itself. For now it's empty, and if I refresh it, there are tables, failed underscore jobs, migrations, password underscore resets, our petitions table, and the users table. The petitions table is the one that we created. In the structure, you can see that it has the ID. And if I show you the file itself that is the table ID column, it has a title column, varchar stands for string. It has the category table, which is a varchar like we defined. It has the description table, which is also a text. It has the author table varchar, which stands for string, and it has, has the integer table for signees. It also has two timestamps. These timestamps function is what creates the created underscore at and updated underscore at columns. As I mentioned earlier in the course, when creating an API route, we work in the API.php file. 
First, we use the following command to create the corresponding file PHP Artisan install API within this file. The API URL prefix is automatically applied to the URL. In the API.php file, we have two options for how to create the routes. We can list each individual route and map it to the control actions like this. Routes, get, so we are getting data from the petition's URL which is associated with the petition controller class and specifically the index action. Let's not forget to import a petition controller at the top of the file. To store a new petition, you would use the route post method to the petition's URL, which is associated with the petition controller class, specifically with the store method. And we could do this for all actions in the petition's controller, but however, there is a faster way to do this. Instead of doing each route one by one, we can use the route API resource method, which again goes to the petition's URL and is associated with the petition controller class. The API resource method will map all of the actions in the petition controller with all the HTTP verbs in one line of code, which is amazing. There may be a time where the controller only has some actions, such as the index or the show action. In this case, we can use the route resource method to instruct Laravel that we only need specific routes. We would say route, resource, then send it to the petition's endpoint associated with the petition controller, and then we chain the only method that accepts an array of control actions we want to create. In our case, the index and the store method. In our case, we need all actions. So let's reroute code back and use the API resource instead. To see that this worked, we can run the PHP artisan route list in the terminal to check that all routes have been created. And as you can see, yes, they have. Every action has been assigned a correct HTTP method and an endpoint. Endpoint is where the API sends the request. If you look at these URIs, they all follow the same conventions and they only differ in the method they use and at the end of the endpoint. So this index action, its URI is slash petitions and it uses the get HTTP method. We can also send the post method to the same URI, but this is associated with the store action. Then if we want to display a specific petition, we need to specify the petition ID and we use to get method and this is all associated with the show action in the controller and so on. An endpoint is what allows you to customize the request to achieve a specific result or to retrieve specific data. Each feature of an API needs its own endpoints. Let's have a look at some of Spotify's API endpoints. Every API has a base URL to which the various endpoints are added. Spotify's base URL is https colon slash slash api.spotify.com slash v1. If you send a get request to slash albums, you will receive JSON response with all albums. If you send a get request to slash albums slash ID of an album, you will receive a response with the details of a specific album. And if you send a get request to slash artists slash ID of a specific artist slash albums, you will receive a response with a specific artist's albums. Now that we have created a model, the controller, the API resource, the migration, the seed, and the API routes, it's time to implement the controller methods.